Hey guys, welcome back to the 4-1 Week. Today we're going to talk about what's new and what's different in Windows 8. So first of all, you might notice when we boot into our computer, the first thing we see is this start screen. And this start screen is the Windows 8 start menu. And if we click on our desktop, one of the first things we noticed is that our start button is gone. We no longer have that Windows Start button that we're so familiar with in that bottom left corner of our screen. It's been replaced by this Windows 8 Start screen. As opposed to just a little pop-up, we get an entire screen. So with this screen, we can do a lot of things. We have what's known as Live Tiles. And these Live Tiles are moving tiles that re we can resize and we can put them in different groups. So for instance, I have an email tile and this email tile I sent myself an email just so you could see that when I if I were to click on this I could open up that email but if I didn't like that tile being that large I could simply right click and I could make it smaller and it would be a smaller tile as opposed to this larger tile and it still tells me I have one new email right here so it's live and it's constantly updating if somebody were to see it, send me an email right now that number would change to two so I can right click I can make it larger I could also right click on it and turn the tile on or off. Now if I completely wanted to get rid of that tile, I could simply unpin from the start menu. So the right click is still a very viable option for Windows 8, we're just implementing it in a different way. So to, I don't really want to do anything else, let's close this real quick. So if you notice what I did, I, I'm going to open up my calendar. If I open up something and I don't really like it, I can click at the top to close it and drag it all the way to the bottom of the screen or if I had a touch screen I could touch the top of the screen and drag down all the way to the bottom. Um, so for instance let's uh, talk about some other things. We have what's known as apps. Now in the desktop we have these programs. Internet Explorer is a program. Windows Media Player is a program. Within Windows 8 these are known as apps just like we have on phones and tablets. Now what's different about Windows 8 compared to Windows 7 is all of these different apps that I have in or installed onto my computer are the same exact apps that are installed on the Windows 8 phones and the Windows 8 RT tablets. So the applications are the same and they, um, they expand or scale across all forms of Windows that we are come to accustomed to now. Windows 8 for the phone, Windows 8 RT for a tablet, and Windows 8 for a des desktop or a laptop. Um, so let's see, for instance, let's open up, I don't have anything because this is still new, but if I were to scroll my mouse, I have a mouse wheel, if I scroll it, I can go over to the other side of the screen, or I could simply just move my mouse to that side of the screen and it would scroll for me. So if I wanted to open up Microsoft Word, this is not an app. This is a shortcut to a program within my desktop. So if I click on that, it's going to open up Microsoft Word on my desktop. So notice I'm still on my desktop. If I close Word, notice it's not pinned to my start button or start menu or taskbar at the bottom, excuse me, but it is pinned to my start menu. If I right click, I can pin to my taskbar. So when I've pinned when, uh, Microsoft Word to my taskbar, when I go back to my desktop, Microsoft Word is now down here on my taskbar. So we still have a right click. I can still right click on my desktop and get a lot of the same features, but I can also right click on these tabs, or excuse me, these tiles, and make them smaller and I can turn them off of being live to where they don't update. If you are on a laptop maybe trying to save battery, you might not want to have everything a live tile. But if you're on a desktop or if you're always plugged in, it really doesn't matter if your tile is live or not. Now, let's say this stock app I have, I want to put it in a group with, let's say, the news app or the sports app and this news app up here. I can simply click and drag and notice when I move it, it moves other apps around so where I can place it somewhere. Or if I go right here, I get a little gray bar that gray bar means create a new group. So let's say I wanted to put my news in the group, my sports in the group, and then this Bing app up here. Now, if I want to make this group a name and call it news, for instance, I could click this minus bar, and that shows me everything that's installed. When I see the group that's highlighted, I can right click on the group and name it. 
So now let's say I want to name this news and stocks. So when I click enter and it barely shows up because of the scale we're in. But if I were to go back and get it back out of full screen, notice that group is now named news and stocks. So I could do this if I didn't really understand what was going on over here. I could right click and name this group Windows Desktop Applications. Now when I go back, this is now my Windows Desktop Applications. If I wanted to add an application, I could simply just right click, choose All Apps, and then find some type of application. Like let's say I didn't have Photoshop there. I could right click on Photoshop and I could pin to start. By default, it's always going to put it, oops, excuse me. By default, it's always going to put it way over here, so it's in its own group right now. I can simply just click and drag and move it to this group. So now I have that application in my group. Now, this version of Windows is specifically set up for touch or to implement touch. So what is the difference between Windows 8 and Windows 8 RT? is that when we click on desktop for Windows 8 Pro, I can still go into my computer and I have program files. These are all programs I have installed on my computer. Um, for instance, all the Adobe programs. All these Adobe programs cannot be installed in Windows 8 RT. You do not have access to run programs within the desktop environment. You can only run de uh, programs within this Windows 8 start screen environment or the formerly known as Metro. Now we could also get an option menu and that's very simple to do. It's known as charms and if we move the mouse to the top right corner or if we move it to the bottom right corner we get this little menu over on the side as well as the clock and the date and this is known as the options. Now sharing is very big in Windows 8. You can almost share in any application and if we click start that simply either goes back to the desktop or it goes to the start screen. It's just the opposite. Now same concept if I were to go in the bottom left corner I've already opened up the desktop so I could click and go back to the desktop or click and go back to the start screen. Um, we have a settings option. There's a lot of stuff in settings so let's just start for instance with tiles. If I turn administrative tiles on and I go back, click out of this. Now when I scroll over, I see all the administrative applications. So for instance, I could even hit my minus sign and name this group administrative tools. And now I know that that particular group is specific to administrative tools, oops, excuse me, within Windows. Now going back to the settings, if we click down here on change PC settings, this is going to give us a lot of options. I can change the image of my lock screen. So if I didn't like that space needle and I wanted the, the highway, for instance, I could also choose which applications are live updated on that lock screen. So this is very uh, familiar with what we have in a tablet or a phone. We can also have it on our desktop. So my mail, um, is already on there, my calendar, the weather, I could add messaging, and I believe that's it because I don't have that many programs installed. I could also browse for a picture and find a picture that I wanted to use as my lock screen. The start screen, again, this is the same concept. We could choose the background of our start screen as well as changing the color. And we could also have an account picture. If we had a camera, we could take a picture of our face and put that right here. Under users, this is just our account and where we're a member of, which computer locally or on a domain. Notifications, we can, like I said, we can turn certain notifications on or off from the start screen. We can choose what we're actually searching. So um, I'll show you how the search works in a second, but this is searching all of these applications or programs. Sharing, if I had Facebook installed, for instance, I could share via Facebook and turn it on or off here and choose how many programs I wanted to show in that list. Under general, this is basic change of time, how to switch between apps, if we want to be able to swipe from the left edge. So for instance, if I go in the top left corner, the last program I had open is what I'm going to uh, switch to in this sense. Just some other things under privacy, 
um, which devices we have loaded, hardware onto our computer. If we're a part of a wireless network, we could turn it on or off. If we're, for instance, like a tablet or a phone, if you wanted to turn airplane mode on and use it on a plane. Ease of access, this is changing the contrast of our computer if we wanted to make it easier to read if we had vision or hearing um, disabilities. Excuse me. Um, sync our settings. This would be something we would use with our mail, our Microsoft account. And if we were part of a home group, we could change the sharings and receive a home group password. So I'm just going to close this again by clicking the top, dragging to the bottom. I'm going to go back to that settings for, an in, for a second. This is where I would see my wireless networks. This is my volume, brightness, notifications, keyboard. If I wanted an on-screen keyboard, I could select that. And power option. This is to restart or shut down. So we'll get back out of that for a second. And we already mentioned the, the corners. The top right and the bottom right are to bring up this menu. The top left is to switch back to another recent program. Bottom left is to either go back to start or back to our desktop. So just to make sure we understand how that works, I'll open the calendar again. Now when I go back to start, if I click the bottom left, oops, excuse me, the bottom right or bottom left or the top left, it's going to go to the either most recent or the last program. If I mouse over the left and then come down similar to this right side, when you come down it changes. If I mouse over the top left, or that bottom left and then I mouse up or down it gives me a list of all of the applications I currently have open so if I open the weather and then I come back over here and go up I can now see my calendar desktop and then I currently have the weather open so let's stop this for a second let's close that alright so that's a little bit about Windows 8 just what's new, what's different, how to make the best of it. I'm going to post some other videos on what to do to make Windows 8 a little bit more like Windows 7 if you're missing some things or don't might not know how to get around with certain applications or programs. So thanks for watching. Have a nice day.